Commissioner, you sent for me? That's right, Steve. Well, this time I got the jump on you. How so? You always call me in here and send me halfway around the world on five minutes' notice. Well, this time I'm all packed. Where do I go? Uh, just down the hall. Oh, fine. Mitchell the mastermind. So I unpack. Well, better not, Jeff. You uh, start just down the hall. Where you end up is anybody's business. Hmm? International lecture tours. <laughs> hey, look, my soapbox days are over. Don't worry, you won't be making any speeches, but you'll be investigating a few people who do. Uh, this is an organization of uh, six European professors who lecture all around the world. So? Oh, uh, we have information that one of them is picking up information from contacts here and taking it back to Europe with him. Which one is it? Uh, we don't know. But Dr. Gerber does. Dr. Gerber? He's one of the professors listed here. And he's waiting just down the hall to talk with you right now. Steve, a lot of vital information leaks out of the country this way. Talk to Dr. Gerber. Find out all you can from him. Then go anywhere and do anything you have to to smash the whole operation. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. <laughs> Sure, I've got my assignment, a real switch. Ten minutes after talking to the commissioner, I'm usually heading for the nearest airport, but here I am just walking down the hall. I've got a strong hunch, though, that the deal's going to involve a lot more than a friendly stroll. Mr. Mitchell, as your commissioner probably told you, I'm a member of International Lecture Tours. Yeah. Uh, I understand you have reason to believe that one of the other members of the organization is a foreign agent? I am sure of it. Moreover, I know who this person is. Well? I can only tell you that on one condition, Mr. Mitchell. Yeah? I must have protection. <laughs> well, that shouldn't be very hard to arrange. You're safe in this country. No, you do not understand. I am not speaking of protection for myself. Oh? Here. <clears throat> my wife died last year. This is your boy? Yes, my son, Kurt, 10 years old. This is the only picture I have of him. It's safer that way. He's the one you want protection for? Yes. Where is he? At a boarding school in Stockholm, Sweden. I had to leave him there. He has no other relatives. The school is run by an Englishman, Horace Wakefield. Well, we could have some member of our consulate in Stockholm pick no, him up. No, that is no good. The boy is registered under his mother's name, in Skold, at the Wakefield School. No one must know his identity, nor where he is, until he is absolutely safe. I see. Well, in that case, I think I'll run over to Stockholm and pick up your son, Kurt, myself. That is what I had hoped you would say, Mr. Mitchell. And when you return... You will tell me who the head of the spy ring is? Yes. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mitchell. All right. So, for a change, my assignment is simple. Just pick up a little boy in Stockholm and bring him back to the United States. <laughs> I arrive late in the afternoon and go straight to the Wakefield School. Yes? Dr. Wakefield? That's correct. What may I do for you, sir? I'm Steve Mitchell from the United States. I'd like to talk with one of your students, Kurt Inskold. Kurt? Yes, I have a message for him from his father. Come in, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you. Sit down, please. Well, where's Kurt? Mr. Mitchell. Kurt has disappeared. What? I can't find him anywhere. I'm worried sick. What happened? Well, last night a woman came to see Kurt. She said that she was his aunt. 
His aunt? Wait a minute. His father told me he had no other living relative. Mr. Power was I to know that. She said she was his aunt, and I had no reason to doubt her. Okay, go on. Well, I sent her to his room. I believe that she left after visiting hours were over. What do you mean you believe? You're not sure? No. Last night I had a splitting headache. I turned in early. Sounds like a pretty careless way to run a boarding school, Dr. Wakefield. I resent that, Mr. Mitchell. I'm usually very careful about the rules and regulations, but last night with this headache, I was, I was obliged to go to bed. Well, skip it. Then you're not sure when this woman left? No. I'm not sure of anything except that Kurt wasn't here this morning. Oh, great. You wanted to see Dr. Wakefield. Come in, Elsa. Elsa, this is Mr. Mitchell. How do you do? Hello, Elsa. You know, of course, that your little friend Kurt has disappeared. Yes. Now, Elsa, I want you to tell me something. Did he ever speak to you of running away? No, Dr. Wakefield. Elsa, have you any idea what could have happened or where he might be? No, sir. Goodbye, Elsa. Have you called the police yet? No, at first we thought it might be a boy's prank. Wait a minute. What if he's been kidnapped? I think he's being held to ensure that someone will keep their mouth shut. That means he's safe for now until the kidnappers feel the pressure on them. No, Doctor, I think this is something that's got to be done undercover. Don't report it yet. Wait till I see what I can find out. Very well. By the way, do you know of an outfit called International Lecture Tours? Yes, as a matter of fact, they have an office right here in Stockholm. Scotland's Garden 123, I believe. 123. Thank you, Dr. Wakefield. I'll check with you later. Hi, what can I do for you? You in charge of this lecture outfit? Well, I'm the uh, leg man. <laughs> well, then I guess you're the guy I want to talk to. My name is Mitchell. Saunders is mine. Always glad to meet anyone from the States. Sit hey. down. Thank you. So you're the leg man for this outfit. What does that involve? Oh, you name it. The works. Shagging around the world in front of the wise men, scheduling lecture dates, making hotel reservations, making sure they don't run out of toothpaste. <laughs> that sounds like quite a job. I imagine there are easier ways of making a living. How'd you get into this racket? Oh, I don't know. Sort of stumbled into it, I guess. I was stranded here in Sweden, broke. And I read about these professors organizing a lecture tour. Also heard that they needed a nursemaid. So here I am, Saunders the nursemaid. You know, I'd like a little information about these professors. Looks pretty official. What do you want to know? How well do you know them? Well, how well can you know those birds? They live in a world of their own, you know. Yeah. Where are they all now? Well, this will give you an idea of the setup at present. Over here. Uh, Stelter's in Calcutta. Utex in Copenhagen. Labord's in Toronto. Chumley's in Cape Town, South Africa. <laughs> you keep these guys pretty well spread out, don't you? Yeah. Uh, Gerber's in the United States. Yeah, I know. Uh, isn't there anybody right here? Oh, wait a minute. Friedrich. Sure, he's right here in, Star in uh, Stockholm. I'm expecting him any minute, as a matter of fact. He just phoned, uh, got a beep about something. He's a regular fireball. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I'd kind of like to meet this Friedrich. Well, stick around, he ought to be here. Saunders! Saunders! He is. Uh, hello, Dr. Saunders, what kind of a booking agent oh, are well, you? Let's keep calm, For the last time, I yeah. tell you I must have better hotel accommodation. Oh, this room you have assigned to me, the, 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 the drafty, the plumbing is no good. Yeah, well, uh, no, Dr. And, and Frederick, it's awfully hard to get a in the room upstairs to... over mine all night long, clump, 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 while I'm trying to work on my lecture notes yes. all night long, clump, clump, clump. Yes. How much of this can a man put up with? Well, that's a good question. Uh, yes, so uh, this is uh, Mr. Mitchell, he's uh, a newspaper correspondent. Oh, please, no interviews. I am busy. Saunders, why do you schedule interviews when you know I am so busy? And furthermore, why do you schedule me to lecture in Stockholm when you know I want to be in the United States? 
I scheduled you for Stockholm because ever since you had that quarrel with Gerber, I've done my best to keep you two as far apart as possible. Oh, that Gerber. Well, I even so you should have given me first preference as to the location. Uh, you and Dr. Gerber don't get along so well? That man is impossible. Why, the theories in his lectures, they are absolutely unsound. Look, I'm very sorry I brought the matter up. Are uh, you sure there isn't any other reason for your feelings about Dr. Gerber? Of course I am sure, isn't that enough? To have a man who, who goes around lecturing, who, who undoes all of the good that I have done? Uh, one thing more. Would you mind telling me where you were last night? I? Last night? Well, I, I was in my hotel room, working on my lecture notes. But over here, that clump, 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 how could the man work? That's funny. Hmm? I called you about a lecture date last night and didn't get an answer. Oh, yes, I had forgotten. I, I, I stepped out for a little while. Was she nice? Oh, she was... No, see here, this is none of your business. Saunders, I leave you with two words. I do not like newspaper reporters, and I want you to get me better hotel accommodations. Hm. Well, now you've met Dr. Friedrich. Sure have. Well, I'll check with you later, Saunders. Okay. Well, it looks like the deal's starting to take shape. Last night, a woman visits Kurt's Gerber. This morning, he's gone. Friedrich doesn't like Kurt's father, and Friedrich was out with a woman last night. Yeah, on the surface, it all fits, but I've got an uneasy feeling the whole pattern could fall apart as fast as a smoke ring and a draft Hello. Hi, this is Saunders of International Lecture Tours. Yeah? Uh, I, I got an item I thought might interest you. Not five minutes after you left the office, Dr. Buczek walked in. Buczek? Wait a minute. Buczek's supposed to be in Copenhagen. That's right. So I asked how come. What the good doctor have to say? Uh, something about wanting to cancel the rest of the tour. Tired or something like that. I see. What time the doctor arrived? Search me. You want the address? 327 Ritter's gotten. 327 Ritter's gotten? Thanks, Saunders. I think I'd better give Buczek the double check. I'm Steve Mitchell, a newspaper man from the United States. I'd like to see Dr. Buczek. You're looking at her. Well... You seem surprised. I am. I thought Dr. Buczek was a man. Sorry. I'm not. Thank you. Please, come in. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Mitchell? Dr. Buczek, I understand you canceled the rest of your lectures and returned home suddenly. Why, yes. I, <laughs> lectures are so tiring. Sometimes I wonder why I ever started on the second. <laughs> when did you arrive in Stockholm? Well, our plane landed only this morning. Mr. Mitchell, you said you are a reporter. You sure you didn't arrive last night? But of course not. I just told you. And you sure you didn't uh, take a trip out to Dr. Wakefield's school last night? I've never heard of the place. See here, Mr. Mitchell. I'm quite sure that you're not a newspaper reporter. And I'm also quite sure that my activities are none of your business. Let's just pretend that they are my business, Dr. Buchek. Very well. In that case, why don't you just pretend that I'm telling you the truth about my arriving this morning? I see. Well, thanks for the interview. I can check up on your time of arrival, you know. Please do. 
when you're quite through checking up on me, why don't you pretend that you owe me an apology for your roots? with you, my friend. Who are you? Permit me. I am Oscar. I want you to meet my friend, Orla. I don't see any... Hey, what's this all about? You made a mistake when you bothered the young lady. Dr. Buchek? Now it will be necessary for the three of us to take a nice ride. A short ride, I suppose. For me and Orla, yes. But for you, it will be such a long ride that I doubt whether you will ever come back. Mitchell? Hey, what happened to you? You look like you've been dragged through a knot hole. That's the understatement of the week, Saunders. Hey, look, have you got a picture of your beautiful Dr. Buchek around? Buchek? Yeah. Oh, sure, I can let you have one of the publicity stills. We get the newspapers. Yeah, that do? Yeah, that'll do fine. She made a big hit with you, huh? Yeah, a big hit. Somehow or other, I'm going to return the compliment. Oh, Mitchell, I'm glad you came. Something has happened that you should know about. What is it, Dr. Wakefield? Well, you remember that woman that came here the night before last, posing as Kurt's aunt? Yes, the night Kurt disappeared. What about it? She returned to my school again this morning. What? Less than an hour ago. I was out of my office at the time, but my secretary told me that she was here, and she was inquiring about Kurt again. Wait a minute. That means they don't have Kurt. Who do you mean by they? I think I know who one of them is. A woman. Here, take a look at that. Her name is Buchek. Well, what about her? Isn't that the woman that was inquiring about Kurt? I've never seen this woman before in my life. You sure of that? Yes. Oh, great. That case blows up in my face. I still don't know where Kurt is. Hugo! You are expecting Dr. Friedrich, I see. Yes, we're old friends. He comes here for chess and tea. I see. Is your move, I believe? No, gentlemen. It's my move, I believe.
come to help me? Yeah. How did you know? I had been praying for help. I knew it would come. My father sent you? Yeah. What happened, Kurt? A lady came to see me at school. She said she was a friend of my father's, but I knew she was lying. So I asked her to wait outside my room while I talked. And as soon as I was alone, I climbed out the window and ran away. Must be getting tired of those sandwiches. My girlfriend, Elsa, has been bringing them to me. How did you happen to pick this deserted barn to hide in? I, oh, I knew it was the right place as soon as I saw this manger. Manger? Yes, I read about a little boy in the manger once. Yeah. Well, I guess you couldn't have picked a better place. All right, come on, Kurt. Wait a minute. Oh, great. Oscar and... Well, what do you know? I find out who my boy is in this deal when it's too late. It is never too late. It will be if I don't come up with an idea quick. I'm your boy. Funny what some guys will do for a buck, huh? You sent me chasing after that Dr. Buchek woman so your two stooges would know where to pick me up. Incidentally, where's your other stooge? The woman that tried to get Kurt. Well, she's waiting at my office until I take care of this little deal. How'd you happen to find the barn? We managed to persuade little Ilsa to tell us. So now we've got Kurt. So? What happened? Well, the original scheme was to grab Kurt, to keep Gerber from spilling about me. But now you've complicated things, so... Mr. Mitchell! Mr. Mitchell! Come in, Wakefield. He also told me they'd come here. Here. Put him on ice. Is it all over, Mr. Mitchell? It will be as soon as they pick up Saunders' girl at the office. I have been praying something would happen to deliver us. It happened. Well, I sort of made it happen, Kurt. Did you? Oh. I prayed for a bolt of lightning, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> Guess you could call that wire flash a bolt of lightning, but it was man-made lightning, Kurt. Was it? How did you happen to think of it? Well, it just popped in my mind. You see? Yeah. Yeah, I see. I'm the last man in the world to argue the point, too, Kurt. Come on. You're going home to your father. Mr. Mitchell! 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 Mr. Mitchell!